Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. As always, guys, check in each day to all three channels. Make sure you got the little bell clicked there so you get some notifications. And we did one on Heart's Own uh, message and offered help from the higher densities again. Uh, if we could all see the bigger picture, the bigger picture stepping out of the drama to take a look down from a different perspective. You know, this is a Dickens quote. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredul incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. That sounds like duality and the separation of the energies to me. It certainly does. And that's what we've been talking about. And, you know, again, when you look to E Arts, this is why I chose this picture. It's because we are going to kind of go down two different routes. Some are, are going to, hey, they're going to choose the system. They're going to choose the way things were, uh, even though it's going to be, in many ways, uh, a much darker version of what we've experienced growing up. A much more totalitarian uh, version. And yet there's others that are going to choose just the opposite. They're going to choose freedom and their path is going to be a little bit harder. Just straight and, you know, just being totally honest there. The path that way is going to be more challenging. But it's it's all up to the individual. It is. And, and, you know, it helps if we do broaden our perspective when we are walking into a difficult situation like this. So we see this, uh, a crypto divide, is the U.S. dollar in trouble amid the BRICS rise? The world is moving towards a new world order. Ah, yeah, we know. I mean, this has been in the works forever. And if we say it's been in the works many years, if we say it's been in the works decades, if we even maybe say it's been in the works centuries, we might not be actually hitting it on the nose. Yeah. Right. <laughs> This is part of the greater cycle of things. And uh, it goes on to say this will in undoubtedly impact the crypto energy. Many in the global economy mock it as the fall of the United States of America. Uh, since the beginning of the plague upon the land, the U.S. economy has taken a hard stance. As a result of these events, investors turn to DeFi for financial re relief and survival. One of the things that I want to get across in this video, and by no means am I any sort of financial uh, wizard. I'm not interested, honestly, too much. I have to force myself to you know, read these things and learn about these things because I recognize, just as Yeshua did, that this is the number one way in which humanity is kept down and is controlled and enslaved. And so it's very, very distasteful to me. And yet it's it's also something that we're, we're simply in at this point. Most of us listening are in this system. Everybody is to a degree or not. Now, if you are completely self-sustaining somewhere who knows tucked away in some nation we've never even heard of maybe you're totally out of the system congratulations you know because that's really the goal is is getting of the system again that statement of you might be in the world but you're not of the world and and this is the challenge to rise above and beyond the one thing I want to get across is that things can absolutely change and they could change drastically very quick and they have in the past. This is the thing to understand. What we're going through now, we could look to the past and get a clue as to what to expect. Mm, that's, that's a very good idea is looking to the past to see what's coming in the, in the future. And you can do that with everything almost everything across the board if you want to know what's going to happen um in your future just check out your history books because it's all in a cycle the u.s dollar could go digital here's what you need to know well it shouldn't say could it, it should say will because it's inevitable they've already put this in motion it's already in motion japan 
edges closer towards issuing digital yen with plans for new panel. Yeah. And again, this was on this Thursday. So the, these are new things that we're talking about here. New revelations. Uh, yeah, sort of. You know, again, there's really nothing new in heaven and earth. Everything is a rehash and a recycle of what's happened. And even with us, um, perhaps we are firmly implanted at the Bronze Age now. You know, our feet are in the Bronze Age. We still have all that muck, mire, and residue of a Dark Age. And the system of the Dark Age is still all around us. But it's, see, the thing is, that it, they know they can't hang on to all of us. They're going to try to keep as many um, cattle in, in, in their particular herd as possible. Because, again, these these are beings that live off the energy of other beings. De-dollarization. Keyword, de-dollarization. And when there was talk in the past, in, in years past, decades past, oh, do you think a WW3 could happen? The thing that would be brought up often was as long as you know the opposing nations are coupled together financially, it won't happen. It needs to be a decoupling first. Well, that decoupling is just about complete. It is pretty much complete now. So in other words, at this point in time, yeah, it could happen at any any second. Any second. It all dep depends on when they want to trigger it. And again, this is a shifting of a power structure. This is a shifting of the power structure that we see. The power structure behind the scenes is still in control de-dollarization it's you know again they've given us the prophecy of babylon the great this is babylon the great and i hope you guys are still recording as the thing went out there yeah i think we're still good okay we had a brief little blurb there de-dollarization is the term of the day more countries seek alternatives to the u.s dollar Ultimately, it's going to be one global currency, but that's going to come about in stages. It's not coming about tomorrow, uh, not even next year. It's stages. Hold on to your wallets. A new world currency could be in the making. Oh, yeah. Currency of the BRICS nations. So anybody that's, again, if, if we're looking to, and I've seen People say, you know, that the guy on the left there is the good guy in all this. No, there is, there's no white hats that we see. These are all players that are part of the power structure. This is where we truly need to build discernment. You know, everybody within this power structure, sure, uh, they all have their particular frequency that they're at. As there was a, a question and I brought up um, Enlil and Enki, you know, because again, you know, there are many that do research on the Anunnaki and uh, will view Enki as a good guy. And well, yeah, he's a little less malevolent than Enlil was, but the bottom line is he, he and according to the stories, he uh, tricked humanity into staying slaves when they could have been freed by Enu. And humans could have took their place alongside the Anunnaki. No, Mr. Enki tricked us into staying slaves. So, yeah, good cop, bad cop is what's going on. White hat, black hat. Well, they're all black hats. They just, you know, again, they change hats as needed. And again, the white hat in one side is a black hat to the other side. You got to recognize this. If you're growing up in... China and in Russia, you're going to have a totally different perspective than if you're growing up in the U.S. And, and just keep in mind, the changing of the hats is all for your entertainment and your manipulation. Absolutely. And still, you know, I, I know I understand the desire to hold out hope that we won't have to do anything. No, that it will be done for us. And that's what it is. That's what they get us used to is putting hope into another one of the controllers. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, we really should say controllers, puppets. So, yeah, yeah, the BRICS al Alliance is exploring 
The creation of an innovative currency which plans to share proposals on its establishment at the forthcoming summit in South Africa, according to Alexander Babakov, deputy chairman of Russia's parliament, the State Duma. Speaking at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum in New Delhi, India on Thursday, Babakov said that the plan is to initially transition to using domestic currencies in transactions and then introduce and circulate a digital or alternative form of the groundbreaking currency in the near future. Babakov anticipates that the BRICS Leader Summit will reveal a preparedness to implement this particular initiative with work on the ongoing project, right? So again, it's going to come in stages. Uh, you know, there there is going to be the WW hashtag number three, unless we could really wake up people very, very fast, because again, the power structure is still in place here. And uh, yeah, if they had no soldiers to implement any of their, or police or, police or soldiers, uh, you know, to implement any of this, no, then, then it wouldn't come to pass, you know. So again, it's, it's us policing ourselves because we are duped into trusting the system. Uh, you know, it's, it's really, it's devilishly engin- <laughs> engineered and, and they, they got this down. Dilma Rousseff, elected head of BRICS New Development Bank, seated in Shanghai. By the way, four of the five largest banks in the world are out of China now. Yes, I mean, if you haven't noticed, everything has already shifted. And, and where the world is headquartered, it's not going to be London, it's not going to be D.C., it's not going to be New York. You know, all those are going to become, you know, not even secondary. The world's going to be centered, really, it feels like between uh, Beijing, the Far East, and, and, and the Middle East. Russia endorses Argentine or a- Argentina and Iran joining BRICS and many, 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 many other nations. Uh, I mean, you know, BRICS is Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Argentina, and Iran, and then we have, uh, gosh, Mexico wants to join. I, I mean, you you could just keep adding on, you know, Saudi Arabia, Petro Yuan, Petro Dollars days are gone. You know, this is just a major shift. They, you guys, you know, a lot of you guys understood and recognized when manufacturing left the U.S., that was it. That was really it, because it was manufacturing that brought the U.S. to prominence because of, you know, everything that happened with World War II. The U.S. was the main engine of the MIC, the military industrial complex. Now that's shifting to China. And actually, it's already shifting out of China. You know, so China's lead on the world stage will be relatively brief. Um, but again, it's it's just a transition. This is all about transition. And, you know, the reality is it won't be too, too long, not too, too long, before all the illusions even gone. And humanity is, you know, basically given the realization that humanity has never been in control of itself. And it's, it, it's never been free to determine its direction. We've been in this dark age, totally under the control of very, very unhuman, inhuman, inhumane beings. Mm-hmm. Well, it, you know, it's their time to shine and they're not going to uh, let any uh, anything get away from them. Any time that they can take control and utilize that control and manipulate others, that's what they're going to do. So it's just in their nature, just like, you know, a, a, a scorpion. There's, there's a story of a, a scorpion and, and it gets a ride across... Um, the the river by a turtle and then when the turtle finally gets the scorpion across the scorpion stings it and this turtle says well why did you do that to me he says i'm sorry it's just in my nature so that's how they are egypt becomes a member of brick's new development bank you see where it's going the power is just rolling and again it was it seems like it all coincided with 46 saying the ruble is rubbish in reality the dollar is dead de-dollarization, more countries seek alternatives to U.S. dollar. Absolutely. And we have debt deflation. The adjustment to reality is likely more violent than anything seen in the 70s. Um, The reality is 
whale. Yeah, and this is what we really want to get across in this. You can see what's building. There's going to be a shift. We are going to see perhaps a series of new monetary, temporary monetary systems put in place as it's transitioning to that, that one global system that they envision. So what you're going to see is that it's going to be way worse than what we saw in 2008. It's going to be way worse than the inflation in the 70s. Uh, in fact, it's going to be worse than the Great Depression in order to bring about what they are trying to do. What we have to do is, is look to some of the examples in history. Now, the 20s were roaring for many people. You know, after World War I, the war to end all wars, 1914, 1918, Spanish flu, 1918. People were ready for a break and some happiness and positiveness. You know, we had a lot of things going on. The 20s were kind of risque. They were uh, certainly full of um, a vibrancy. For most, but not for all. And this is the thing to realize, you know, it wasn't just um, all frivolity and partying, you know, 24-7, 365 for all the people of the world. In Germany, uh, the loser, quote unquote, of World War I, uh, the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, Germany, and some other allied um countries you know lost the war and then of course we had this period where germany went through horrible economic situation while a lot of other countries were actually kind of booming until 1929 uh, germany you know things were tough and this really also set the stage for the rise of a nationalistic power that would stoke and stroke the ego of Germans because Germans felt battered, they felt beaten, and and they were, you know, they felt put down. And what's it, what are these kids doing? They're counting money. Yeah, those those are all bills. They're counting money because the money was worthless. There was such a devaluation. And we've seen this in numerous countries around the world. I feel that this is what's planned for the U.S. I mean, you might, I don't know what's sitting there. It might be more than a million dollars or the equivalent of a million dollars. It might be good for not much <laughs> in the future. As you see, people were building pyramids and card houses and using wheelbarrows to cart the money in to buy like uh, some groceries. This has happened in, in Argentina numerous times. This has happened in Venezuela. This has happened in, in many countries across the world when there's no more faith in the system. Well, you know, then all that, you know, hard cash you have stored up is going to be good for starting fires or wiping, you know what? It's not going to be good for hardly anything. And meanwhile, you'll still have people lining up in lines to get their rationed allowances, as was the case in 1920s Germany. It, you know, and this, what did this do? Oh, this, this led to all sorts of repressed energies. Obviously, resentment, bitterness, while other countries were booming, not everybody, but, but many were booming. Life was hard. Life was harsh. And it felt like the German people, after losing the war, were being punished for a long period of time with the economic system that was in place and the devaluation of their money. This again allowed in the 1930s for, you know, that, that guy with the initials AH to rise to power talking about how you know, our nation is the best. We are the purest. We are this. We are that. Stoking the ego fires. Listen to the politicians out there. Do you hear any say, we are number one. We are the greatest country on earth. Well, A.H. said that. Yeah, you're talking about the superiority of one country or one person over another. That's just stoking ego. If we don't recognize that as what we might term lightworkers starseeds, then we haven't woke up yet.
We need to do a better job of waking up. Are they stoking ego? Are they trying to, you know, work on our pride? Because then they're just going to use that later. Again, you need an enemy. This is how the system works. These people went through harsh times. Look at that's a that's a great kite. Wait a minute, it's made with their currency. Yeah, you know, of course these are all poses and and this is all obviously staged photography here, but it's real in that the devaluation was real. As you look, I mean the currency didn't mean much. You know, you drop a penny on the ground, do you pick it up nowadays? Do you pick up a nickel, a quarter? Where, when do you actually go and pick it up and when do you just keep walking? Same thing could be with actual bills. This is part of what's coming and at some point they will say well, we we the, the dollar has no more worth, and we're going to issue a new currency. You know, of course, just like they did with you know confiscating the gold, they'll give you a period of time, and and you'll have to change out the you know your currency for the new currency because the the old currency is going to be meaningless. This is something to take into effect. The banks know this now. And they are already making it hard for some people to get their money. What you should be doing, really, in my opinion, just my opinion, I'm no, not an expert, is get what you need for the foreseeable future as far as you could go ahead. You know, I would, again, I, if a house is paid off, the house is paid off. You know, if your car is paid off, your car is paid off. Now, you might not be able to afford gas. <laughs> you might not be able to afford electricity. This is why so many people have done things like you know, hey, I'm going to put a wood stove in. But hey, in certain parts of the world, that might be illegal to give those emissions up. This is why they've done that. This has all been so completely planned. Hyperinflation and devaluation of the currency that will go hand in hand. The Weimar Germany period is a recurring historical topic. Pops up every few years, but when historians and columnists refer to Weimar Germany, they're usually focused on the years of 1930 and 1933 when Germany experienced crushing deflation, as did most of the world after the crash in 1929. The Smoot Hawley tariffs, the Great Depression, the Nazis prepared to seize power again, and they just stoked the ego of the people that had been so down, downtrodden. But when this author thinks about hyperinflation, we're interested in events from a full decade earlier as the peak years of the Weimar Germany hyperinflation were 1921 to 1923. Then too, after the hyperinflation ended, Germany experienced a time of relative peace and economic recovery from 24 to 29. The five-year stretch was prosperous enough to be known as the Golden Twenties. So while it's true that the Weimar Republic ran for 14 years from 1919 to 1933 and then ended disastrously, followed by the rise of her you-know-who and the NAZI rule, historically there were at least three different chapters to the Weimar era. era. First came the post-war inflation and hyperinflation. Second came a period of relative peace and prosperity. Then finally, the crushing deflation that led to the collapse and led to the rise of a dictatorship. And what they have planned for the world right now is the rise of a global dictatorship. This is all part of the you know, bigger scheme here. Now... And if you are in Saudi Arabia, if you're in the UAE, if you're in maybe, you know, China itself, besides the soldiers, they're going to go off to, to war, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the, this time period economically might not be as harsh what's ahead as it's going to be for the U.S. and NATO. Um, you know, it, it's going to be relative to where we are finding ourselves situated. And there might be some other countries that remain neutral. And, and neutral is always kind of the best place to be in, in the war. Outside of the conflict zone is always a good place to be. It, and it's just not just Germany in that time period. Because there there's been others, you know, just recently, Venezuela. I mean, seriously. The economic crisis that engulfed Venezuela since 2013 took a surprising turn in 2018. 
as the Maduro government announced a massive 95% devaluation of the currency. Can you imagine that? So if you have, let's say again, 95, uh, let's say a million dollars, all of a sudden 95% of that is gone. All of a sudden, you know, you're, you're left with 50,000 or, you know, so it, it's just, that's the type of thing we could, you know, the buying power is what we're talking about. The buying power. When you see everything and you think you're okay, and then all of a sudden, everything that you have as far as the currency is all of a sudden made worthless. Yeah, it's it's much better to, you know, you're going to be looking at, at the people that have got themselves organized. They have rice, beans, lentils stored, they have, you know, invested in silver, and if they're able to, they've invested in gold, because those things will hold their value. I don't trust in, at some point in time, they obviously cannot allow any alternative um, electronic currencies, because that would defeat the whole purpose. They're just being used to get us used to the concept, and then they'll implement it. And at first, it might be that there is a digital dollar and then you know once the u.s is curved up and the new power structures put in place i mean they might even give you know um new names to certain you know areas it, it might be the, the communist states of the u.s on the left coast <laughs> who knows who knows what they're gonna do as far as that goes um but it's gonna be a transitory period and you might see Massive devaluations, I, I think that's a lock, you know, as as you see a whole chicken costing, what, 14,600,000 bolivars. Now, bolivars named after, um, you know, the liberator of, of Latin America, Simon Bolivar, who um, led a revolution of sorts. But really, again, when we see these revolutions, there's always backdoor deals are done, so the power structure really does stay the same. Let the people think they have freedom. Let the people think they are contributing to the decision-making. It's just an illusion, though. But the reality is we can. We can split off... And we can, uh, you know, the best way to put it is, I think the most simplest system out there is barter and trade. You got a skill, somebody else has, um, you know, some object that you need, whether it's eggs or milk from their cow or whatever it is, you know, hey, I fix your roof, I fix this, I fix that. Or we could even, you know, we babysit and, you know, you supply us with a dozen eggs, this type of thing. Uh, other, Zimbabwe went through a period like that as well. You know, think about it. 95% of the, of the buying power gone overnight. 95% of the buying power gone overnight. And the other thing to take in, into um, account is that obviously they're going to be propping up and pushing the brick side of things so it doesn't mean that they're going to go through that no this is this is what's planned for the dollar this is what's planned uh for the nato countries venezuela subtracts six zeros from currency second overhaul in three years the u.s could go through the same thing you know i i, I absolutely would almost expect they are going to say dollars are no longer viable you know, and at some point go digital. And then that digital U.S. currency at some point will become a regional currency, depending on where you're perhaps finding yourself within the U.S. And the same thing with uh, the U.K. and Canada and and New Zealand and Australia as well. The rest of everybody out there will find themselves in these different blocks. It's been talked about for so many times you know, the North American Union, right, South America, you know, Latin America, having all these different separate um, arbitrary uh, groupings of, of what we would have as in today's world as these different countries, as the countries, the illusion of the countries at some point might even go away when they're going into that complete, complete lockdown period. 
and fully implementing, which this all might take a lot of time. Again, they've given us dates, agenda 2030, 2030. I think, you know, this transitory period economically is going to probably extend out to about 2030. That makes a lot of sense. They already know this. But yet we saw those dire numbers uh, that had 2025 in mind. And 2025, yeah, I think 2025 is their timeline where they want to have basic, basically the end of the U.S. and NATO hegemony on the world done with. And that's, you know, the time period where the full rise of the BRICS nations uh, is in effect. And so, you know, again, what do we do? We work together. Yeah, this is talking from the Council on Foreign Relations, the rise and fall of a petro state. Well, we could take Venezuela out and put in the U.S. of A. Remember, petrodollar, no more. I mean, they're trading. France just made a deal with China. Again, France to trade in yuan it's it's all done as cindy would say but the sniveling and how venezuela became a big casino and this article is from like a year ago january of 2020 2022 and what i take from this article is again how you have uh, two different worlds within there because you have big wigs you got high rollers um that go to venezuela and you know, you have them gambling here in these casinos. They whip out rolls of $100 bills, you know, inches thick. And then you have other people that are working in the casinos and working, you know, just regular old jobs anywhere and literally making $2, uh, you know, a $2 a month. <laughs> I mean, this is the great divide. This is the great divide. This has all been planned. And again, if we want to look to what could possibly happen in the U.S., you know, look to Venezuela, look to Argentina, look to the Weimar Republic. And then what's coming, it's all very obvious. And it's right in our face. And it's all about our face. It's all about our thumbprints. All this technology. Oh, do you want to use a passcode or do you want to just put your imprint in? Let, let us get a picture of your iris. And again, you know, if, if you ever speak up, you're going to starve or you're going to not have a roof over your head. This is how so few control so many. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's a shame. And we have different directions that we can go. It's just we're so used to just taking whatever the controllers give us and following that path that we don't really sit down and think about, well, how can we better utilize this situation that we're in? And it's all about perspective. It's all about manipulating your position in a way that's going to be more advantageous for you um, and realizing that the only reason this power structure can stay held up is because we have to agree to it. And so we're going to be posting, uh, we, we got actually several messages that came through from Yeshua uh, in pieces. And he was saying, and these we're going to put up over on Heart's Home, um, these channeled messages. So they'll be up on the newest channel, Heart's Home. Uh, he was just basically saying that one of his main purposes was to destroy the monetary system, was to show people alternatives. That was one of his main purposes in, in coming because, again, it's through the monetary system that we are enslaved. And it's through the, the end of this system and finding our own alternatives that we will find freedom. Somebody, uh, a fairly regular poster, I think, made a comment and it kind of got me totally wrong. Uh, it, be when I was talking about breaking the spokes of the wheel that we find ourselves, you know, basically tied to. It's the economic wheel. It's the system of the wheel, uh, the, the system of the world that, that we need to break the spokes. It's like we're all chained to these great wheels of economy and energy and energy enslavement. 
what we need to do is break the spokes of those in order to free ourselves. Now, that doesn't mean harming other humans. No, we're, we're never, ever advocating violence. It's ahimsa, after all. We've talked so many times about ahimsa, which is something that if we do live as much as possible through the concept of no harm to others, Again, if, if you believe in the concept of ahimsa, you're not going to believe in a violent revolution. No, you, you believe that you just make it so that they're, they're no longer in control of you. you. Ideally, you make them insignificant in the lives of you and anybody else that wants to be free. How do you do that? You don't use their currency. It's going to come in stages. Um, but again, every every stage, as they go through their stages here, we're going to be faced with decisions. Uh, do we keep following along or do we try to go and do our own thing now? Are, are we set up good enough to do our own thing now? Or do we have to wait for the next <laughs> time? You know, the next um, potential new issuance of a new currency exchange. At what point do you say, no, nah, I just can't do that? And, you know, one question that's been burning for years in the hearts and the minds of the people all over this planet is in that famous song by Meatloaf. I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. What is he talking about? Does anybody have an answer for that? I'd love to see you guys put your answers out there. Maybe it's, hey, I I won't take the CHIP and I'm not going to be part of the Borg. Maybe that's what he was getting at. I don't know. What do you guys think? Indeed. So I look forward to your comments. Share your thoughts on this and uh, your concerns and how you see things going. And again, much love as always. We can't go looking at that. We got to go looking at this. We got to stick together. If we stick together... While, you know, they're trying to pull us down this dark road, if there's enough of us that stick together, we're going to make our own path. And we're going to make our own way. And we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. There is safety and progress in numbers. Could you imagine this pack of kitties going out to take care of all the mice and rats on a farm? I mean, they are going to do a really good job sticking together. As always, God bless and namaste. Namaste.